Okay, energy over time, work over time. Does anybody remember what we kind of did with that in terms of dealing with circuits? Power equals, all right, we're talking about circuits. Remember we had to be, look at the voltage, energy per charge. Look at the current, charge per time over on the chalkboard, right? Energy per charge, charge per time. What happens if I multiply those two? If I multiply energy per charge voltage times charge per time current, what's going to happen? You're going to get power, right? Because the charge will cancel out. Energy per charge times charge per time gives you energy per time, which is power. So power is really the product of current and voltage, right? Charge per time times energy per charge. That gives me the power. Remember that voltage is also equal to IR. So these are two equations to really commit to memory. E equals IV, E equals IR. Because then we can get this equation for power. If we plug in IR for V, see how it becomes I squared R? So power is I squared R if we, if we don't want it in terms of voltage. But we could also substitute in for I here, right? So I is V over R. So we have V times V over R would be V squared over R. And so these three equations right here are what should come to mind anytime you get, in, you get a problem that's like power dissipated in a resistor, power developed by a component, you know, like the, the, the slightly different sort of verbiage there, but you'll recognize it. it's like, oh, it's asking about the power and it's, it's dealing with electricity. So it's either I V, I squared R, or V squared over R. These are the three equations for power. And if you only remember P equals IV and V equals IR, that's enough. Okay, because you can see like I just kind of derived these two by going, oh, plug in IR for V, you get this one, plug in um, V over R, right? So you divide both sides by R, I equals V over R. So I is V over R, so plug in that for I. Plug in V over R for I, just this one. Right, so you can derive these two differently. And these are easier to remember, right? Everything, there's no squares, no fractions. And so now if we've got sort of, did anybody, does anybody now looking at your notes now say, oh yeah, I had those equations. They were actually in my notes. Okay, good. But, but now I want to like clearly label them. So it's like power equations for resistors, you know? So it's like your notebook really is like, it's yours, you know? And, and, and if you can use your physics notebook and like your learning of physics throughout this course as a way to you know, metacognate, to, to practice your metacognition, like how do I think? It's like, oh, it's helpful for me if I sort of go back into my notes and I do this. If I rewrite the notes like this, you know, and I've seen, you know, like students send me their notebooks every week. And some students, it's like, wow, that's very organized. You know, I, I, I wonder, you know, if other students would um, benefit by sort of that, that strategy that this student's kind of developed for themselves. But, but every student's different. And I hate to sort of say, here's the best way to do it because I like it or I think it's organized, right? Because um, I think we lose something when we're like, we sort of force people to think a certain way. I think it's good that we think differently. And, and I think it's a, um, it leads to you know, tremendous insight when someone says, well, I thought about it like this, and I think it's different. You know, it's like, wow, that's really a more elegant path to the solution. And we'll lose that if we sort of, well, I think we, that already happens with the way we teach mathematics. It's kind of like we, we condition people to think a certain way, and it, it, um, it leads to sort of losses in innovation. But, Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, organizing your metacognition. So if you, if you have these equations, it's like, okay, you got to know where to find them so they won't use them. What's the idea that we want from yesterday? What kind of circuit is this? Anybody recognize that? Parallel. What do we know about parallel circuits? We said something is the same everywhere in in a series circuit, right? Current is the same everywhere in a series circuit because there's only one path to the electron to flow through. There's like only one value of current. In that. But what's the same in a parallel circuit? Voltage is the same across parallel branches, and each branch only has one resistor anyway. 
And so if we hone in on the idea that voltage is the same across parallel branches, this is the equation that's really going to be the easiest one to, to sort of help us in solving this. Because we can say, okay, well, whatever the voltage is, it's the same across all of these, right? They're all connected in, in sort of a parallel across this, whatever. This is another symbol for EMF, like the positive and negative sort of terminal of a battery or you know, whatever you know, you're connected to. So there's the EMF, these are resistors, right? They're, they're all in parallel. It tells us that we can see it, right? These are parallel to the line. And so now let's sort of solve it like this. The ratio, P2 to 3 to 4. So the power dissipated by this one is going to be V squared um, over 2. And the power dissipated by this one, I'm just going to set up the way they have like this. So V2 over 2, it's the same voltage, V squared. All right, V squared over 2. This is going to be V squared over 3. And this one's going to be what? V squared over 4. Doesn't matter what the voltage is, it's all the same. When I'm doing a proportion, that's just going to kind of cancel out. So I'll make the voltage one. I'll make it zero. I'll make it one. So then I have the ratio one half to one third to one fourth. And I wish that was one of the answers because that would be done, but it's not. So I have to be like, which one of these is equal to that? That's tougher. Does anybody know how to solve it from here? So like the physics got us to this point, and now it's a math problem. Okay, we gotta, we gotta you know, know, know enough math here that we can finish this thing off. Any suggestions? If I were to write these three letters, does that mean anything to anybody? What is it? You're right. I'm oh, making a denominator. All right. The least common multiple, so we can get the least common denominator, right? Like, what is the common multiple that these things have? The lowest one, so that we can kind of make it a common denominator. Like, we usually find the least common multiple, so we can get a least common denominator, right? Working with fractions. What's the least common multiple of two, three, and four? Well, all right. So multiply everything by 12. And so it's like, um, 12 times a half is six. 12 times a third is four. 12 times a fourth is three. Six to four to three. Same thing as a half to a third to a fourth. Six to four to three ratio, which is why C is better. 